On the 18th of February, the separatist People's Republics of Donetsk and Luhansk ordered a mobilization of all men aged 18 to 55. They have also organized a mass evacuation of women and children to Russia. Hello my friends, my name is Artur Rehi and I am an Estonian soldier. Let's go. Russia has claimed in the recent days to have withdrawn some of the troops from the Ukrainian border, but we do have the US satellite images and they tell the opposite story. Satellite imagery revealed a pontoon bridge built only five miles from the Ukraine border across the Pripyat River. Yes, the Pripyat River, the Pripyat city. That pontoon bridge was built in the Chernobyl exclusion zone in Belarus. This channel, the Estonian soldier channel, it could not survive without the Patreons. I will name you five of them right now and I'll do it as a true Estonian by butchering your names. You're welcome, my friends. Oskar Sandoval. Thank you for becoming a Patreon. Gabriel Shnunnon. Shnun. Is that your real name? I, <laughs> thank you. Dan or Dan. Uh, I will say your name as an American. Dan because Dan became... Uh, right now he's the biggest patron I have. So thank you Dan. Thank you so much. Josep Armstrong. Josep, your arm is strong. Yeah, we get best humor in this channel. <laughs> thank you. Tiler Dodi. Tyler Durden from the Fight Club personally supporting the channel. Thank you. If you want your name to be read or if you just like my videos, then head on to the Patreon link in the description below. Thank you, my friends. Another big announcement, the Estonian Soldier Discord server is coming. Yes, it is being built right now, almost ready. If you want to join the server, you got to join the channel, but don't worry. It's only 99 cents. Yes. Everybody can join because it's so damn cheap. Stay tuned, my friends. I'll let you know when it's up. On the 17th of February, Russian-backed separatists shelled Ukrainian kindergarten. Luckily, the children were eating lunch in another part of the building. It was lunchtime and the gym was hit. The children were supposed to have gym class in 15 minutes. So 15 minutes were in between their children and... and the shelling so they were lucky unfortunately three of the staff members got injured so they were not that lucky I want to be as objective as I can right now so the Russian side claims something else they claim Ukrainians themselves shelled their own kindergarten so it is up to you which side you want to believe I have a video lined up for you that explains the situation better than I can. It comes from Caspian Report. It is an amazing channel. I really love it. He shows us the leaked Russian battle plans to take most of Ukraine by force. Let's see it. Should war commence, the Russian army could strike from Donbas in the east, Belarus in the north and Crimea in the south. The assault would come in three distinct phases, thereby allowing breathing room for diplomatic concessions. After taking a specific region and if negotiations fail, the Russian army could move on to the next target and so on until Kiev rebukes and Moscow's political objective is met. Sorry, I'll pause. As much as I understand this, three distinct phases to add room for diplomatic concessions is if they take some part of land, some cities, uh, there are some casualties on both sides, then they make a little pause and they see, they feel their enemy out, you know, they feel Ukraine out if they're ready to budge. And if they're not ready to budge, they can take the next objective and next objective. As much as as a soldier, I understand the goal is to get Ukraine to surrender without having to take most of the country. You don't have to take most of the country, you just have to inflict enough casualties and take enough cities for that. Might be wrong here, feel free to correct me in the comments, my friends. Either way, the first phase is likely to focus on southern Ukraine. Russian tanks and troops coming from Crimea would take the coastline and surround the city of Odessa. Meanwhile, a Russian amphibious landing operation would cut Ukraine off from the Black Sea while strengthening the supply lines going into Crimea. Interestingly, six Russian amphibious ships departed the Baltic Sea in mid-January 
heading towards the Atlantic Ocean. The Baltic Sea, this is the Estonian coastline. These ships spent most of the time, most of their years, only about 150 kilometers from the Estonian border, maybe even less. And now they have left. It is believed their destination is the Black Sea, which makes an amphibious assault all the more feasible. Eventually though, the Russians would want to join their forces north of Odessa and then advance as far as Transnistria, a Russian-backed separatist region legally part of Moldova. At the same time, still in phase one... Transnistria in Moldova is very similar to South Ossetia and Abkhazia in Georgia, very similar to Donetsk and Luhansk in Ukraine. Russian special forces would infiltrate the southern portion of the Dnieper River. Their mission would be to disrupt Ukrainian logistics going across the river. Russia's vast artillery forces in Crimea would coordinate their attacks with the special forces on the ground, thereby tying up Ukrainian forces. Likewise, from the east in Donbas, Russian troops backed by the Air Force would take a chunk of eastern Ukraine and then take the cities of Dnipro and Zaporozhnya by the Dnieper River. From there, the Russians would be free to advance towards Crimea. This is just a battle plan right here, but I would say as a soldier, most of the work would be done here by the Air Force, of course, but then it would be followed up by the infantry, by the tanks, by the PTRs, BMPs. I think we're talking about, on this in this phase already, we're talking about over 10,000 casualties, maybe more both sides yeah, and form a continuous land bridge going from Donbas to Transnistria. As soon as southern Ukraine comes under Russian control, the Kremlin would start dictating terms for a political surrender. If that doesn't work, it's on to phase two. Coming from the northeast, Russian mechanized infantry would surround Ukraine's second largest city, Kharkiv. Backed by the air force, the Russian army would advance on Poltova and anchor by the Dnieper. It is easy to say on the battle plans here that they would take Kharkiv, but Kharkiv is east in eastern Ukraine. Ukrainians know this. They have fortified the city and there is enough weapons for the civilians in that city. So taking Kharkiv, I don't think they would take Kharkiv. I think they would surround the city and not go in it because urban warfare for tanks is deadly and for infantry is so deadly. If they go in that city, they will lose too much to justify this invasion. A few weeks into the siege, the cities would likely capitulate. In the second phase, Russia would have taken much of Ukrainian territories east of the Dnieper. The second round of negotiations would start and, if these fail as well, Russia would launch phase three of its plan. In this final push, Russian troops would seek to take a chunk of western Ukraine, but crossing the Dnieper might get tricky. The safest way to cross the river is not to cross it, but to move from Belarus into western Ukraine. In December last year, President Lukashenko stated that Belarus would do everything to bring Ukraine back into the fold. That means Belarus would serve as a launching platform, not that it would have much of a choice. Either way, from Belarus, Russian troops would move into the west of Ukraine, but they would have to go around the Chernobyl radiation zone and take the town of Koroshten first. The Bantun Bridge was built in this Chernobyl radiation zone on the Belarusian side to the Pripyat River here. They have the possibility to build those bridges within hours across all of these rivers that you see here. Russian amphibious uh, capability is actually really good, I have to admit. So these rivers would not be a problem. At the same time, a second Russian contingent would move from Russia into the remainder of northeast Ukraine. Afterwards, in typical pincer movement tactics, the two northern contingents would simultaneously advance on Kiev. The Ukrainian capital would come under siege from the east and west. Now, Kiev is a large metropolitan site, so the Russians would likely wait outside and force the Ukrainian government to capitulate. Yeah. By the end of phase three, 
roughly two-thirds of Ukraine would come under Russian control. There is a very strong nationalistic movement going on in Ukraine right now and almost the whole city of Kiev is strongly Ukraine-minded. So taking that city by going in there is, is a graveyard of Russian soldiers. And of course, Ukrainians also, but the price is so high. I don't think with these battle plans, Russians could enter any bigger city. This is just my opinion. I might be wrong here. Of course, you can correct me in the comments and I will read your comments and take it into consideration. But what I've seen about urban warfare, there's no need to go in these big cities. You can just surround them and take the countryside. However, no plan survives first contact with the enemy. And True. Ukraine is True. no pushover. Going by the official numbers, it has a standing army of 145,000 troops, with an estimated 300,000 veterans on standby. Ukraine has also been stockpiling arms and ammunition for years, even acquiring some high-tech weaponry from abroad. But its arsenal is not yet large enough to change the battlefield. Russia, on the contrary, has very capable artillery, rocket and missile systems. Its yes, air power yes. is substantial and it has the world's largest fleet. Unfortunately, we have to admit that everything Ukraine has, Russia has more and bigger and better. That's how the situation is right now. ...of tanks. Russian weapons could devastate Ukrainian military units from afar. In an all-out war, Ukraine would see thousands of casualties within the first hour, and thousands more mm, the yeah. days following. So make no mistake about it, the consequences would be terrifying and the shock would trigger millions to flee west. Yet for Russia, the real challenge... I think we would probably talk about another refugee crisis, not from Syria this time, but actually from Ukraine. Millions of refugees. Ukrainian population is 44 million. I think that gives us an idea of how many refugees would flee the country into EU member countries. It would start a huge crisis, I think. ...would be the resulting insurgency. According to a poll by the Kiev International Institute of Sociology, one-third of Ukraine's citizens are willing to take up armed resistance. Thank you, Cospin Report, for these videos. Uh, if you don't know the channel, the link is in the description below. They do very detailed videos about political analysis, and I, I love this. I love this so much. Go and check them out. Coming back to what's actually happening right now in eastern Ukraine, from the 17th of February, we have seen a big increase of provocative hostilities from the separatist side. Knowing that they have ordered a full mobilization and evacuation of their people, that leads to only one direction. They are getting ready for war. These small probes, small hostilities that have, have been increasing, they are aimed at Ukraine to cause an even bigger response and then to spiral out of control and to spiral into all-out war. They're probing for reactions right now. And the bigger the reaction, the bigger they can react. This is how I understand it. But Ukraine has not been idle throughout all of this. They have bought weapons from all over the place. Let's take Turkey, for example. Baykar, an arms manufacturer in Istanbul, Turkey, has sold dozens of drones to Ukraine. These are smart drones capable of shooting out missiles. Ukraine has also signed contracts with Turkey to set aside land to make these drones locally in Ukraine. So they are producing their own weapons, smart weapons. The Ukrainian Bayraktar TB2 drone was used for the first time on the battlefield. We actually have a video of it being used. It shot a missile and took out a Russian-backed separatist artillery piece that was shelling Ukrainian positions. This shows us how effective these weapons are on the battlefield. Before that, the separatists didn't have to be afraid of anything from above. Now they do. Adding to that, Ukraine has signed a trilateral cooperation pact with UK and Poland. Those three countries will coordinate cybersecurity, energy security, and countering misinformation. Also, Ukraine has weapons flowing into it left and right, mostly from the UK and the USA. We're talking about Stinger missiles and javelins and more. Every new javelin system flowing into Ukraine makes the cost of invasion for Russia 
bigger and bigger and bigger. I will keep you posted of what's happening in Eastern Ukraine. If you don't agree with anything I say in this video, please feel free to go into the comments. I do read the comments. It's your opportunity to shine with your knowledge. Also, if you like the videos, please become a patron of the channel. And stay tuned for the Discord. Estonian Soldier Discord server is getting ready in about one to two weeks. I will let you know if you wanna go if you wanna have fun in that server, you gotta become a member of this channel. Only 99 cents. Thank you for watching, and as always, until my next video, stay cool my friends, and bye bye.